Carly Almlavar is a name we have been hearing a lot about for several years. And I finally got the chance to get her in the studio and talk to her and ask her all about her life, her hobbies, her interests, and her love. So, all right, Carly, tell us a little bit about where did you meet Will? Um, what's the love story? <laughs> Uh, you know, of course, we, right. we just want to know it all. Right. Oh, great. <laughs> um, so I I told you earlier that I you moved down here through a teaching program. So I was teaching in Church Point for the first three years that I lived here. So I had summers off. And the first summer that I had off, um, I went to the Washington, D.C. area for an internship. Oh, wow. And yeah. And so. Busy uh, young woman. I, I, you know, I <laughs> had the summer off and, you know, we've Might already talked. Well, right? We've already talked about how I like to stay busy. So <laughs> um, I was able to find an internship and work work on some education stuff in Washington, D.C. And I um, had some friends from college. One of my friends from college actually worked with Will. And so she introduced us at mm-hmm. a. Journey Foreigner concert. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yes. I love it. Was, it. I know. It was supposed to be a girls' night out. Right. And they ended up with one extra ticket <laughs> around the office. And so right. they were all friends with Will. And they said, Will, do you want to come to, to you know, this concert? To this girls' night out. Okay. And who is going to pass up, A, a Journey a Foreigner, foreigner con- concert. Right. And B, a, <laughs> being the only guy at a girls' night out. Exactly. Right? That was his thinking. <laughs> and so he he uh, he came to the concert. And, you know, we, we started talking. And then over the course of the summer, that was kind of the beginning of the summer, we Went on a few dates, and then when I came back to South Louisiana to Church Point to teach, we just stayed in touch. And wow. um, after we dated long distance for a year, mm-hmm. I asked him if he would move down here because, you know, I well, told sure. you I'd, I had fallen in love with the area. I wasn't going anywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, well, like, in this area, not to pick on like Washington, D.C., right, the East Coast. Right. I'm sorry. Our food is better. And I think our, our food is way be better. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> No, it was, and, and, you know, Will had visited by that point, and he loved the area, and so it wasn't that hard to convince him, <laughs> and then now that he's been here, he's made it home, too, and, you know, he's he's loved every minute of it, and like I said earlier, this is home. So what do you guys have in common, or are you direct opposites? You know, it's funny how couples relate to one yeah, another, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, we have we have a lot in we have a lot in common. Um, you know, I think our our families are are kind of similar and, you know, just in I think how we were raised mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of our values and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, Will's a if you haven't met him, he's a really good person. Like, you know, I'm always like, oh, my gosh, you're you're such a kind, good person, you know. <laughs> so um, he's you know, he's great and he's smart he works Mm -hmm. he works at cgi a lot of folks know that um and he's been actually with them and they're a company that was purchased by cgi was Mm -hmm. actually he's still in his first job out of college technically speaking wow so so he's really stuck it out with that yes yeah yeah. and so you know he's a he's just a wonderful person very loyal very kind very smart um and you know we we have a lot in common, but then we also have just like typical, <laughs> typical, typical couples, couples, like areas where, you know, it's kind of a little bit opposites attract. So, <laughs> OK, so does he drop his socks on the floor? Does he or does he remember to put it all in the laundry basket? You know, poor Will, I'm poor sorry. Poor Will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about the story in my head about his laundry and just how much trouble I'll be in if I tell it on the radio. <laughs> Um, I don't want to get you in trouble. Right. Let's just say that over the years, we've we've come to a good a good equilibrium <laughs> on laundry. <laughs> but I do most of the laundry. So right. I it, do most of the laundry. It always ends up kind of falling to us to end up doing <laughs> right, the laundry, right? right. Yeah. So we're always chasing shirts and pants right. and towels right. and oh, yes. okay. Well, I'm glad. So we kind of <laughs> we skirted the issue, right? But we didn't tell the whole laundry story, so we right. didn't talk dirty laundry, right? I guess exactly. This perfect, <laughs> perfect. So, do you guys like um, with you know you mentioned earlier when we were talking um, about the soccer and when yeah. he was coaching soccer, yeah, yeah, and you being a part of that, yeah? Do you find it difficult sometimes to work with your spouse in that capacity? You know, I think about my husband and I, and yeah. sometimes you know when we're doing a joint project together and and 
you know, because sometimes we're both wanting to be the leader. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I think about it all the time. My parents actually had a business together. Oh, wow. And sometimes I think about that. I think, what would it be like if Will and I would work together? And I think it would be, you know, I think we would we would do it. But there would, of course, be some some challenges. Right. Um, but, you know, we make a good balance. But we're also, you know, we're the typical like if we're trying to do some home improvement project, it's like. <laughs> We'll manage to get on each other's nerves a just few a times. Bit, just right? a little Just a little bit. I think that's one of, <laughs> actually one of the top five things that they say can be the biggest oh, yeah. stressors in a marriage. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Home improvement makes me just want to pull all my hair out. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. So who is more competitive? Are you more competitive, Ooh. do you think? Or is Will more competitive? That's a really good question. <laughs> I think we're both pretty competitive. I think if I told, if I said I was competitive, <laughs> he would be really mad and he would be like, no, 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 I'm no, more competitive. Right, exactly. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. I'm more competitive. We'll see what he says. <laughs> so, all right, let's talk about your favorite book or your favorite movie. Because I think when we talk to people about that, I think it gives such insight. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's hard to pick sometimes, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah. what you know, do you I'll, think? You I'll go with, for a favorite movie, I'll go with, um, you know, one. I think it came out when I was in high school or maybe a little bit younger, um, but I've just always loved it. And probably why I taught for a few years was Dead Poet Society. Oh, what a great right? movie. Yes. <laughs> oh. Probably seen that oh, a few. Oh, Captain, my captain. Right, right. Yes. Um, and then, you know, I think everybody, because you know, the TV stations, cable networks have helped us. Like who doesn't love Shawshank Redemption, right, you know? Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, those are some books. I I mean, I read and love, I'm not reading as much as I would want to right now, mm-hmm. but I, I love to read and I love all kinds of books. I mean, mm-hmm. I will read everything from nonfiction to fiction and mm-hmm. to current events and everything. Um, you know, this is going to sound like boring and ac- academic. <laughs> no, no. If but... it's about books, I love it. <laughs> okay. I'm so in your camp. I get so, it. <laughs> so one of my favorite books, which I haven't read in a few years, but I one day I'll read it again. I, I really, I really liked um, a George Eliot book called Middlemarch, ah. which is, you know, it's like 800 pages. Oh, I mean, wow. all everybody listening right now is so bored just with me <laughs> saying that, right? But what did you um, love about Middle Well, March? I just felt like, so I think it's, you know, it's written in 1800s. I'm not good with mm-hmm. those details always, but, you know, it won't surprise you, I guess. I really love how she thinks about just human nature and mm-hmm. how she's in touch with people's feelings and emotions and motivations. And, you know, she tells th- these stories of people who are, you know, have all how their lives interconnect and, the you know, and it's just, you know, it's. British literature from, you know, a couple hundred years ago, but, (laughs) but it's still, um, you know, I've just always, I just have always enjoyed her writing. So that's one of my favorites. And, you know, other than that, like, it's hard for me to keep track because I feel like every time, every time I read a voracious reader, a little less so right now, but like, I I try to be on your plate. (laughs) I I try to read a lot and I love to read. And I, I usually find that the last book I read is like my most recent favorite, right? you know? Yeah. I, I, Completely yes. identify with yes. that. I I so get that. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay. So for those who may not know, um, Carly has thrown her hat into the ring. She'll be running for the Lafayette City Parish Council Mayor President seat, if you will. Council drop off Bernie, but Mayor President. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that, Carly. Um, how did this come about? Yeah. Well, it's it's not something that I ever thought I would do. Okay. Um, Interesting. Yeah. I have much preferred in the past to be, you know, someone who was more of the worker bee or more mm-hmm. behind the scenes, mm-hmm. but willing, I think, to step into leadership roles when I felt it was necessary or it was mm-hmm. time. Um, and, you know, a friend of me, a friend of mine a couple of years ago, you know, was talking and I think I was explaining a particular frustration um, you know, as you might imagine, you work in government and you, you run into situations <laughs> sure. that you find frustrating. So, yeah, yeah. and so I was probably explaining a particular, particular situation. And she said, Carly, you should run for mayor president. And I said, no, you know, I just, I just blew her off. Like, cause I would blow people off that would, would, would say, say that. that. Yeah. 
Um, and so she asked me again and I told her no again. And she said, Carly, you're not ever going to want to do it. You're going to wake up one day and you're going to decide that the only way you can make the change you want to make is if you try. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think over the last few months, um, that's where I've gotten to. I feel like Lafayette has a lot of challenges, both the city of Lafayette and the parish of Lafayette. Um, those were some of the things that we talked about in the course of the charter amendments. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I think that if we have really strong leadership as a community that is talking really directly with folks about our problems and about our future, I think that we can make more progress. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that people, you know, generally speaking, the people I have the opportunity to meet, whether I know them well or not, they all care. They all want to be involved. They all want to be part of the solution. And, you know, I just got to the point where I, I said, I have, I, ha I can do more. I can give more. I can be more. So I need to try to do this. So when you decide to do this, does it change everything that is going on in your life at that moment? And how are you juggling with your full-time job <laughs> and thinking about all of the things you'd like to do with this campaign? It is a lot to juggle. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always enjoyed juggling things. So that part, you know. It, that's and, old hat for you now. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. This is kind of, you know, a, a big deal. A big, and I, do, yeah. I don't. I don't take that lightly. Um, you know, I will continue to work for a little while longer and then I will campaign full time for the last few months mm -hmm. of the of the campaign. Um, and, you know, I think that it is, you know, especially because this is not something that I knew for a long time that I would want to do. Um, it was more something that I just decided I was going to do because I care mm -hmm. so much. Um, I have a lot of, you know, there are some things that I'll have to, you know, step back from mm. or slow down on sure. that are important to me. But, um, you know, I feel like all of the things that I've learned working in this community are going to help contribute to, um, you know, both my candidacy and ultimately um, to the city and the parish of Lafayette when elected. So what do you, what's your vision? I mean, when you first came to Lafayette and then living here these years and, Thinking about the future, what what would you love to see? Well, I think first and foremost, I want to see people who feel a part of making Lafayette the best it can be. Mm -hmm. And I want people in all parts of the parish and all parts of the city to feel that way because, you know, I have lived other places and I do have friends that live other places and, you know, I don't think people always realize what an amazing thing we have here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they may love it and they may say they want to not live anywhere else. But, you know, for someone that has lived other places, it's magical here. Mm -hmm. And so and I want everybody to feel a part of sustaining that culture mm -hmm. and our community and how they can get involved. And I also want them to feel, you know, responsible for that. I know when we. When we did um, Project Front Yard a few years ago, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that we really talked about with folks was, you know, you want a beautiful, wonderful Lafayette just like everyone else. But this is we all need to be a part of this. Right. You know, right, yeah, it if, takes a lot of hands. If everybody, to do you it. know, the whole idea was if everybody takes care of their own front yard, we don't have a problem about mm -hmm. what Lafayette looks like, mm -hmm. you know. And so. um you know, bringing that philosophy and that openness and that transparency into um, a leadership role in government, I think is is it can be transformative. You know, I was fortunate enough to go to Greenville, South Carolina last week, I guess, with one Acadiana and one of their canvas trips. Um, and, you know, one thing we've learned time and time again when one Acadiana has taken those trips and I've been on two and I know others have happened without me but you know when you have strong communicative collaborative leadership that's asking for people to be involved in the future of their city you don't always have agreement you mm -hmm. don't always have you know cohesive cohesion but you you do you can sort of multiply your effectiveness as a community and you can kind of push forward through some really tough challenges so that's what I'm excited to bring that's what I've tried to do so far in my career and my work mm -hmm. and, you know, ready to take that to the next level. 
We've got more to talk. Uh, just another short segment coming up with Carly on the bar and just being able to get a chance to find out a little bit more about her. We've got more on the way.